trying to take the title a new Mr. October. Nine hits and the sacrifice fly that sends the Boston Red Sox to the American League Championship Series. Well, they decided to pitch to the hottest hitter instead of loading up the bases and potentially look at a double play or a little more strategy, and they attacked Kike Hernandez, and he did what he's done all series, delivered. First season in Boston. For guys. First and third, one out. Your thought process going into that at bat? Um, no, I try to do too much. All I got to do is bring that run in from third. Um, you know, having Danny at third instead of Vasky, uh, he's my mind a little bit, but um, thank you. Thank you, fans. Thanks for yelling my name. That made me, that made my confidence go up a few levels, so thank you for that. Kike, this game tonight, it was a roller coaster. You take the lead, you blow the lead. What was it like being a part of this with this crowd and this emotion? It was great. It was awesome. The atmosphere here in Fenway ever since we got back to 100% capacity. Um, the last few weeks, the energy has been unbelievable. Uh, definitely helps us, you know, bring our, bring our game a little bit up. And, uh, you know, we, we nobody said it was going to be easy. And, uh, you know, we got off to that, that we got to that five run lead early and we weren't able to tally. And, you know, they have a heck, heck of a ball game. Uh, I mean, ball club, they, they, they did it to us last night. They came back in the eighth again. Um, you know, but it was a matter of, you know, keep grinding, keep, keep, don't, don't stop till we win. And uh, that's what we did. We're going to the American League Championship Series. At what point this season did you think this team could do this? Spring training. You know, when I signed here, I, I looked at the roster and I, I, I knew that, uh, you know, we had a really, uh, a bunch of, of really good players, winning players that have been here, that have done it before. Um, I knew that we just had to hang in there until till we got sale back and we after we got sale I, I knew that we were going to become a really dangerous team and Here we are. Kike, congratulations. Thanks, Thank you. Kenny. Joe back to you All right, Kenny Kike Hernandez in the Red Sox He said he believed in spring training But not many other people did that this Red Sox team would be here now. No, they didn't uh, the leadership of Alex Cora has done a uh, an incredible job Of course he was gone the year before and so that, that unit that continuity has been incredible. This is an unbelievable offensive team. And they're going on to show their offense one more series at least. 26 runs over the last three games of this series for the Red Sox. All of them wins after they drop game one. They're headed to the American League Championship Series. And we're headed to Kevin Burkhardt and the guys in L.A. <laughs> wow. Wow, wow, wow. All right, Joe, the ALDS postgame show on FS1 is sponsored by Credible Welcome. Congrats to the Red Sox for moving on. Congrats to you, Big Puppy. You God bless you. Ooh, this guy's <laughs> jumping around going like crazy right now. Come on. <laughs> Give it to us. How you feeling? Give it to us. Hey, you, you, you've been watching the gla I mean, look at this right here, buddy. <laughs> you know, you know what, you know what we got going on right here, right? The pocket I can, magic. I can see the future right Such here. Hope. I can see the future through this glass right here. Michael you might want to power it tomorrow to, the to watch what's coming up with the White Sox. <laughs> Let's go! He's Let's little, go! He's a little excited. He has yes. right to be. What a game and welcome. Big hurt, Hall of Famer Frank Thomas, Big Poppy. David Ortiz, A-Rod, Alex Rodriguez is here. This was, uh, this was really some series, right? You think about the dramatics, uh, the drama, the last couple innings of last night, and then, of course, you know, the wild eighth inning. It was five, this five-nothing game. A's come back, Kiermaier throws a runner out, and then, of course, it's Kike who wins it. Perfect ending, right? And we've been talking about it, right? We said, be careful. He's acting more like Poppy, mm -hmm. but he's phenomenal. And the baseball gods always have a way to line things up perfectly. And what's interesting about this analytics era that we're in, Kevin, no matter what they say about launch angle and this or that, at the end of the day, when all the marbles are on the table, you got to come back to a little old school baseball that's evergreen, a little bunt, a little hit, a 300 foot sacrifice fly, and your Boston Red Sox are off to the ALCS. You know that in baseball nowadays, you barely see that bunt play mm -hmm. put on play. Mm -hmm. But you have a manager like Alex Cora mm -hmm. who know every single detail about the game, and he was like, I'm not gonna let this game walk away from me. Mm -hmm. You know, well, I'm not planning going to Tampa tomorrow. I got a little scared, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna lie to you, but we take the benefit of the doubt in the pregame show talking about playing at home. 
playing at Fenway. And that's what happened tonight, Frank. Well, Alan Score, you got to say it. I mean, he, he plays the game right. He uses analytics, but he also goes to old school baseball like Alec Azul, too. And uh, they find themselves going back to LCS. No one saw this coming this year after the way they played last year. But him coming back into the fold, put them right back where they need to be, to be mentally, and uh, got, them over, got them over this team. Because the, the Tampa Bay Rays is a very, very good ball club. You saw them fight, fight, fight both nights in a row. But the Boston Red Sox found a way to defeat with the division-winning Tampa Bay Rays. Something that, that caught my attention, Kevin, towards the end of the game, it was how the bullpen kind of slowed down for the Tampa Bay. Uh, having, you, you, you probably would think about having the most dangerous pitcher coming from the bullpen to deal with batters in that situation. And, and, and it, it wasn't what I saw. They used all their higher leverage guys earlier in the game mm -hmm. because it was 5 nothing to get them back in the game, but you're right. And then you, you see a 92 at the end. You know, I, I think we could talk a lot of different directions here about Boston, but Frank, I'm going to go back to what you said. Think about a couple weeks ago. The Yankees went into Fenway. They swept them. The Red Sox looked bad. It, it felt like they were done. Mm -hmm. And now here they are. They're The way they're hitting the ball, there's no reason they can't win the World Series. I'm going to be extremely honest. At night, I said Boston's season is over. When they lost that game on that Sunday night main game, you were there in the booth. I thought the season was done. But Alex somehow got his, 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 his locker room and told him, we will win this thing. And they believe. They believe in Alex Cora. The Boston Red Sox showed me a lot of heart. And I'm telling you now, they could be that team of destiny again here in October. That's high in bloom, by the way, in the uh, polo shirt, gray polo shirt. Mm -hmm. uh, think about him. He came from Tampa, goes to Boston to turn things around. How's he feeling right now? Feeling pretty good that his manager, Alex Cora, was back. I mean, he, last year, obviously not in the game, all the stuff left over from Houston with stealing the signs and things like that, and he pays his price. They decided to bring him back. Not an easy decision. Bloom has said that on the record. I, I think that was a good decision. It's a great American story. A guy coming back, he went away, served the suspension, did it in a quiet way, very classy. I used to text with him all the time. He was watching very carefully. He never disconnected from the game. But look, that town, Boston, Massachusetts, they're used to some great coaches over the years. Red Arback with the Celtics, obviously Bill Belichick and what he's been able to do. But what Alex Cora has been able to do is nothing short but phenomenal. And the reason why, last place to first place. And they bend, Kevin, but they don't break. And throughout this series, they showed signs, like, like Big Hurt said, oh, they're done. But sure enough, he keeps coming back. And look at the emotions. Yes. The, the thing is that Alex is the type of manager that he know how to get the good chemistry going. I mean, this whole team, since the first day of spring training, they know that Alex got their back. I mean, there's no controversy like years before. Sometimes you see going back and forth between the mid and the man. Ma Alex know how to handle it. And when you play for a manager like that in a city like Boston, you want to let the skin out there for him because you know that that guy have you back. That's Alex Cora. That's what he means for the Red Sox. Well, when I tell you, I, like I said, his brother was one of my favorite teammates, and Joey Cora was a sponge. He knew everything going on on the field, and his little brother was the same way. He would come in and, and work out with us and learn the game, and uh, what a heck of a job. And you look back what happened the first game of the series. We all looked at Tampa like, they're unbeatable. Yeah. They might run away with this thing. And he said that night, we're going to be fine. We're setting them up. He said, what's his name? Devers was setting them up. We'll be back. Don't worry. My team will be fine any minute. I'm just, I'm really blown away by this Boston Red Sox team because after that night in, in, in New York, I mean, that night in Boston with New York game and what they did the first game, they are still hanging around with a top notch ball club that can win this thing. It's That's my little girl. That's my little girl right there hugging Alex right there. That's his daughter. And you Kevin, I, mean? I, I can tell you from personal experience, being away suspended for a whole year. Mm -hmm. The emotions between dad and daughter is something that's really, really special. That's awesome. And I know they're cherishing it, and they know things and experience things that obviously all of us don't know. La Caballota! <laughs> that's pretty great right there. I, I mean, it is, yeah. I mean, look, it's it's an unbelievable turnaround for them. Obviously, they're in the mix of playing well all year, but just the way that after the Yankees here is coming back, take care of the Yankees in the wild card. After game one, they look, oof, man, they looked overmatched. And then here they are. And you look at, you know, anytime you talk about a team, okay, great manager, we know that. You know they got the big stars. So that with Devers with the home run, J.D. Martinez. But you can't say enough about Kike. They gave him mm -hmm. a two-year deal. The guy had nine hits, six RBIs in this short series. 
I think one thing you can't overlook, this was his 63rd, 63rd playoff game. Wow. And that experience, I mean, that, that makes a difference, right? You guys know? You've been there? The Red Sox are really good at putting pieces together, especially for this moment right here. The addition of Kike is something that is remarkable. They know that they had the potential at the beginning of the season to be in this type of situation. So what you do, Frank, mm -hmm. you get those masterpieces that you know that had the experience. Like I say before, playoff experience carry a long way. Mm -hmm. And that's what they got from Kike right here in this situation. And I think what you get with Alex Cora is two things. I think when you look at analytics 100%, it has its blind spots. If you look at human behavior, it has its blind spots. And what Alex Cora has been able to master beautifully is the hybrid. And, you know, when you talk about, well, what does that mean he's a player's manager? Well, I'm going to give you quick three ones. The bunt with Arroyo, analytics will tell you not to bunt. Yeah. Alex Cora bunts. J.D. Martinez, halfway through the year, says, hey, big man, I love hitting three, four, and five. I don't like hitting second. He, hit, he didn't hit second ever again. And the last one is you see a guy like Chris Sale, who has gone through his struggles, but is a warrior. And because Alex Cora has that trust and belief, he was ready to close that game. Mm -hmm. So it's all in buy-in for the 26-man <clears throat> roster. The reason why I tell you that the Red Sox are really good putting pieces together to compete at this time of the year, is because I remember after the 2006 uh, season, the they put me to the front office and asked me, what do you think we need? Let's see, let's see if we can Celebration get time. with Poppy. Uh, looks like some of the players still kind of heading in there. See if Alex, go ahead, Pop. You can keep going. I just want to hear, hear if there's a speech, but go ahead. Yeah, it just, it just, you talk to them, you let them know what you need. They go for those pieces to be competing by this time of the year. Yeah, the small pieces. It's a great point. But this, you also some emotion. And he, as he told Ken Rosen, thought before the game, we went through a lot at the end of the year. That COVID situation they had at the end of the year, no one thought they could be this far. They did not quit. They, didn't, they did not, like, give up. They came closer together. And this is the type of team we talked about a few minutes ago. Could be a team of destiny. And you talk about Kiki Hernandez again. He was one of the Dodgers clubhouse leaders. He said he was the one guy in that Dodgers locker room that mixed it up every day to keep guys loose and, 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 and play with in baseball. It's obvious he's doing the same thing in Boston. Funny today, the ex-Dodgers, Jock Peterson wins a game for the Braves. Kike Hernandez wins a game for the Red Sox. And now it's champagne time at Fenway, the Boston pop Red Sox. It, pop it, pop it. Going back to the ALCS to take on the winner of the Astros and the White Sox. Of course, that game postponed today, that game four of that series. That'll be tomorrow. Let's listen in. To be in this position is a testament of who you guys are, not only as players, but also as individuals. Uh, since, since day one, you guys believe in this group. Not too many people believe outside this freaking clubhouse. But here we are. ALCS, on to the next one. because of you and they certainly know how to celebrate because of you and now the Red Sox have a chance to be back on top again a lot more work to do taking on the winner of the White Sox or the Astros next but man it's really impressive taking down Rays team which was the best in the American League that won the AL East by eight games over Boston but a resilient bunch and quite the offensive showing and 
You know, I think, Frank, think about this for Boston. When Chris Sale came back, we all kind of thought, man, all right, Biddy's back. They're going to need him to carry him, right? Because you know, they needed some pitching. They needed some starting depth. Well, obviously, Chris, you know, it's hard to come back from Tommy John, right? So he's had his, up, his ups and downs. If you would have told me that they would beat the Rays with one inning from Chris Sale, I, I, amazing, right? I'm shocked. Were. I'm really shocked. But when Chris Sale came back, I said, he's a missing piece to get them to the playoffs. Sure. But I still thought this team was a little bit short this year of the Yankees and the Rays. But they, once again, you know, this, this team believes. You heard Alex Cora's word. Nobody believed they could win this division. I mean, it's not winning a division, but get this far to ALCS because of everyone felt they were a little short this year. But they're proving everybody wrong. And I'm, I'm glad they're here to say I was wrong about this team because I really thought this team was a little bit short this year. Hey, Frank, you mentioned that when the Yankees swept them in that series that I was there in Boston, it felt like they were done. And, and then what we forget is the second to last game of the year, game 161, in D.C. on Saturday, they were down 5-1. to one. Yep. They almost didn't make it out of there, exactly. right? But what happens is when you have an organization, this goes credit to John Henry, Tom Warner, Sam Kennedy, all the way throughout, Heim and, and Alex. When they lose three in a row, nothing leaked out of that organization. There was no panic. Uh, there was no one getting thrown in the bus. So what happens is through struggles, you build a bond and you build confidence. And if you get through it, you get exactly what you're getting now, this championship-type performance. We saw in game one, Rafael Devers was a guy who looked hurt. He looked overmatched, right? He said, hey, now it's, hey, he's fine. Everyone's got bumps and bruises. He'll be fine. Devers was a guy who got the big hit that last game in Washington. Devers with a three-run monster home run to really get them going today, Poppy. He has really evolved as one of the great hitters in the game. He's the face of the franchise. He's the future of that organization. He is the one player that everybody wants to see, want to watch playing because he had that personality. He had that type of attitude. I mean, we, we, we can tell Frank what he's going through right now with his arm. That's why you see the swing being a little rough out there. But at the same time, this guy's the guy, he, he, he's one of the major reasons why they are where they at. Through the regular season, playoff, I mean, this kid belonged to where he at because he had that type of mentality. He don't give up. He don't, I mean, he knows it's a grind every day. He know he got to bring it every day because that organization feel that way about him. And that's why he bring it together every night. Right. Every night he, he left the skin out there on the field. But well, like you said, you, know, you said the future of this. I don't think it's the future. The future is now with this kid. I think right now this kid's one of the top five hitters in all of baseball all around. He's quietly in Boston being that player. But you look at his numbers, raw numbers the last two years. I mean, I'll take his numbers against anybody in baseball. Mm. I mean, this guy can flat out hit the home runs, doubles. I mean, drives in big runs. He's one of those guys that make a difference day, night in and night out in, in baseball. They were talking about, you know, David Price out, Mookie Betts out, mm -hmm. and here comes this rebuild. And all of a sudden, Verdugo comes in, Kike Hernandez comes in, and here they are back in the ALCS. And Kike's having a great time. <laughs> you know what, Avra? I don't believe much on players going out. I believe on who's coming in. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and you can tell. I mean, the different. Mookie Bay, David Price are key player who definitely organization always going to miss because they are good, talented player. But the thing is that one thing you got to keep in mind is once an organization like the Red Sox or the Yankees or the White Sox, big payroll organization, let a player go, they have something on mind. They, are, they had a, a, a plan B. They had a master plan coming up to being able to replace whoever is get to be gone. Well, this is a strong offense. I never said anything was wrong with their offense. I thought they might have been a little short in the back of that bullpen, mm -hmm. you know, to get the job completely done. We'll see going forward to ALCS. This team have enough offense. That lineup is strong. They can beat anyone with their offense. We just have to be concerned a little bit in the back of that bullpen. You saw it tonight. They got a little, you know, they, they, uh, Tampa found a way to come back. 
But uh, in the years past, that back of that bullpen for Boston has been so strong, and you know that. Yes. So uh, it's one of those things right now. They're winning with a great roster. They're finding a way, but they got great chemistry, like you said, and they fought through a lot this year to get where they're at. So you can never count this team out going forward. Definitely have to move on once you trade a player, you know? Yeah. You got you to gotta continue uh, going chase those, those players right there that you think they can get the job done. And that's what the Red Sox do as well. It's just, it just the type of organization that rebuild, grow their play, got the good chemistry going on. And, and, and the good thing about this organization is that, is that the player right away adjust themselves to it. Red Sox all singing, dancing on my own. That's uh, that's the song. I guess I love that song. I love that. I'm nope. dancing on my own right now. I don't know if that's the same song. <laughs> <laughs> dancing on my own. Hey, you look at this. You look at the faces. You look at all the hard work, and you think Vasquez deserves a lot of that, right? Uh -huh. Run and then the big hit in the ninth got the rally going. There he is, back turned to us, right? His back turned to us. I, I always think for you guys who work so hard going all the way back to January, right? I mean, I, you guys have all been in these celebrations. Is it, do you think about that? Do you think about how many days you put in to get here? I'm looking at JD Martinez. You know, he was hurt with that ankle injury. He came back and I mean, he came back with a vengeance. He, what is the lips? He swung the bat really well. He's so tasty. With ankle injury. I thought he would, but. Uh, He's a, he's a big-time leader as a hitter. He's as, as, as tough as he comes in, as a hitter. They're going to need him a lot going forward in the ALCS, and I'm sure he'll be prepared for it. And you know what? When you look at you mentioned Vasquez with the home run, started the base hit. Yeah. Arroyo with the bunt. You know, you had Chris Sale warming up. When you look up and down their roster, there's not a lot of one-dimensional players. They may have one or two, Poppy, but they have a diverse roster, lefty, righties, both in the lineup and in the starting rotation. And then they can mix and match all the way through, but you have a bunch of baseball players that love to play baseball and can execute. And they didn't beat themselves. The Red Sox did not make a lot of mistakes on the stretch. I had a question. Are they going to run out of alcohol in there? <laughs> <laughs> How much alcohol they got in there? <laughs> Since I remember, we used to run out of alcohol. What's going on now? <laughs> the guy running the store is cool. <laughs> Who's your home club? He's Tom? keeping it tight. I love it. Clubby, Tom, Tom? Tommy, on, Tommy. Tommy. But that's the vision around. Shout out. That's the vision shout out to my boy Tommy. He's running it. <laughs> Look at Veritek. Gonna have alcohol for two more of the celebration, baby. Well, let's we're bringing it back to Ben Town. Let's talk about that. How much differently do we see the Red Sox now, right? Well, look, obviously they're hot. You know, they got hot. But like, do we now view them as a real threat to win the World Series, or is it they just caught fire and beat a really good race team, Alex? So, how, what do you, how have your expectations changed? Now? I think anyone that oversee, overlooks this team is making a mistake. I think whoever they play, Astros or Chicago, they're gonna feel like they're the confident and they're ready to take anybody on.